in Portugal we have we are not doing uh, pulmonary rehabilitation in sleep apnea patients. So I guess this is taking baby steps. What are your recommendations? How should we start? What type of program should we start with? Yes, it's uh, it's often a long way to implement um, pulmonary rehabilitation in uh, respiratory diseases. It has been a long way, in, I mean, it's still a long way in COPD patients, for instance. And probably we are at the beginning of the way in sleep apnea patients. But I think that the, um, the evidence we have now for the efficacy of uh, exercise training and rehabilitation in sleep apnea patients should help us to, to start um, first giving advices to the patient to perform more physical activity because uh, as we discussed during the Congress, uh, the, the question of changing behaviors of the patient is important, so increasing spontaneous activity. We have uh, shown that only walking every day for 30 or 45 minutes can only have an Im already have an impact on sleep apnea. And then uh, for more um, structured or standardized uh, rehabilitation program, maybe we have to uh, explain better to rehabilitation centers that sleep apnea patients may also be good candidates for uh, rehabil respiratory rehabilitation. Okay. And... Um, uh what kind of patients would you uh, recommend we start with? Should we start with the simple sleep apnea patient, the thin sleep apnea patient, or uh, sleep apnea patients with comorbid diseases? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so this is a, a big question which uh, patients to target. Um, there are probably patients uh, who may be uh, able to benefit from, uh, for example, uh, oropharyngeal exercises because for them a big issue is uh, the upper airway function. So how to uh, detect these patients is still uh, an open question, I think, but uh, trying oropharyngeal exercises in some patients with reduced upper airway volume, for instance, might be uh, an opportunity. And regarding whole body exercise training, of course, the evidence for the positive effect of exercise training on uh, comorbidities, not only in sleep apnea patients, is so high that any kind of sleep apnea patients with comorbidities should benefit from exercise training. So uh, in a patient with comorbidities, of course, with obesity, uh, implementing exercise training should also probably be recommended. Okay, do you have a final take home message for the people that did not attend? Yes, Your, uh, um, I think we, we can, uh, we can uh, emphasize that exercise training and rehabilitation is now really uh, appearing as a true treatment, as a very efficient treatment. We saw in the Congress that exercise training on some parameters can be almost as efficient as CPAP, the standardized treatment. So I think for um, in the, the field of respiratory diseases, we really have to consider exercise training as a true treatment option for many patients.